Hi and welcome to my playhouse. And today we're going to be installing some 10 gigabit Ethernet cards in um, these three servers up here. And um, yeah, that's because I have got myself a 10 gigabit switch. So I need some uh, servers that will run 10 gigabit. I have installed 10 gigabit Ethernet cards in some of my servers, but I need some test servers. Um, so we're going to be putting network cards at and that's just gonna be these three servers so they were available for the job um, and they have some other cards in there that I'm gonna pull out because they will not be needed if you don't know this when you put a card in a server or a PC even though the card is not being used there you don't attach anything well it uses power in there the machine doesn't know that this card is not going to be used so it powers the card and there's wear and tear on that card and, and yeah, you're also just wasting electricity on that well don't talk to me about wasting electricity but let's go do that I have some cards on the table and I really hope they will be working um, I've had a lot of suggestions comments about the the ubiquity 10 gigabit switch the that's the US-16-10G dash dash It's not a very good name is it? Nah, I don't like it that, that switch is not very compatible with these FSPs the FSP pluses here um, It can be a bit picky So I hope I have something that will um, please it But let's go to the table and see um, what we have so here is the collection and we have three identical 10 gigabit ethernet cards so that's awesome I didn't know that but that that's really awesome to be so lucky to have three identical I was actually thinking that we would have to put in three not identical so um, here is the card. I have no idea right now which brand this really is, but IBM does not. Oh, <laughs> Emolex. Um, IBM slash Lenovo does not make their own uh, network cards. They um, they get Broadcom, Emolex, uh, yeah, Intel, whatever brand that makes the cards, and and they make sure that they're usable in their servers. Um, here is the FSPs that I have. I have a, have a lot of these. Um, I have no idea if this, if they are branded or any good or anything. So uh, we're just gonna plop them in and hope for the best. This is also just 10 gigabit. I'm actually not sure about this one. It doesn't say 10 gigabit. It could be uh, one gigabit in disguise. We will, we will find that out. And these are. 10 gigabit to uh, 1 gigabit cover so we're not going to be using those but they, they were just there so we got to put those away so yeah we'll open up the server and uh, put in the first uh, network card and uh, maybe see if it will connect to the switch that would be awesome I am um, well in my previous video I checked out what cables I had available because I knew that was a problem I have some three meter cables. That's the that's the shortest I have right now. I, oh, I might actually have a couple of two meters, but uh, yeah, that could be an issue. Okay, let's see what we have here first. We have a Logitech 4 gigabit HPA for uh, SAN connection. We are gonna take that one out. Yeah. Then we have two dual Intel network cards and these are Intel Pro 1000 PT dual port. As we're putting in 10 gigabit uh, ports we don't need these and they probably use as much almost as much power as the 10 gigabit so yeah we are gonna 
I've got to put those on the shelf as well. There. So instead we're gonna put in this 10 GB Ethernet card. And it, um, luckily for us, uh, it has the right bracket mounted. So we don't have to do anything. We just have to take this out of the bag and put it in. That's awesome. That's almost too easy. Well, and it's um, PCI Express X8 card. So should we just put it in the first of these? Riser, let's see, two of three, two of four. So no, it really doesn't matter. We're just gonna put it in here. There. And we have installed a 10 GB Ethernet card. Okay. Yeah, there is a lot of stuff in this box. It has never been opened. So it's brand new. It comes with the comes with the manual, comes with a half height or low form factor bracket. It's a good idea to save those. A piece of paper and some warranty stuff here. Let's see what they say. They say that there is uh, so gigabit there's a bracket there is yeah it says what there is in the box and then they have card pop okay um, we're not gonna bother with that it has a nice anti-static bag it has some foam it has a uh, warranty and license information from Lenovo so it's not that old and it's uh, Lenovo branded you can save the bracket the rest um, oh it comes with a CD as well with IBM on it okay so this is from when Lenovo and IBM was um, well making their deal apparently switching everything over to Lenovo instead of IBM so let's um let's pop this back in and then we have installed 10 gigabit uh, Got it. And this one as well. This one has a management key installed. Awesome. So I could go check everything from the computer. Um, very nice. So this one in as well. And we're kind of done here. It even has a really good rate controller down here. Hmm. You can't see. Yeah, you can almost see it. The rate controller here. It uh, does not have a battery. So this is probably a 5014. It's still a good brake controller. So cool. So now we need to go around the back and connect this thing with the SFPs plus 10 gigabits. I did actually go and buy some fiber optical cables and these I got very fairly priced uh, from China. Um, they are LC LC OM3. This one is one meter and this is exactly the same but two meters but a thicker, probably thicker protection on it. So uh, let's go around the back, see, um, see if we can do this. Okay, we're going in. We need to set the lights on the camera. There we are. So now we can see where we're going. Uh, we will have a little stash of weird stuff here so we'll put the cables there and the FSPs and then we have to locate the server that is right here so we'll start by taking the FSP and putting it uh, in um, let's see that's port 1 and that is port 2 so not the pretty easy there hmm. installed up here is the switch, so we're gonna put, gonna take port one. And we're gonna put the other FSP in there. So let's see how this, how this has to go in there. Not like that, apparently. There. Does anything happen over there? 
another show. Uh, so we need to check if it. Uh, so we'll try and pop in a cable and see if that helps. Okay, I have popped in the the cable up in the switch. That one. And if this works, we should see something on the very first LED over here. So let's uh, let's pop this in. See if we are lucky. It uh, shows up white, and white is 10 gigabit, so uh, this is working, awesome! Okay, I'm just gonna clean this one, uh, this is the next one that I'm putting in. I have put in the network card in all three servers now, so I was gonna go around the back and do this, but it's so much easier to, uh, to film it here in front of the server instead of in the back. So we're gonna take this fiber optic cable and we're gonna clean it a little bit here on each. And as I don't have an awesome camera to see if it was any good, I'm just gonna have to hope for the best. I hope that everybody saw that the, the company with the, the little handheld microscope to check the, the ends of the fiber cables, they came back to me and uh, had made a little response video on how to best clean your fiber optic cables. I thought that was pretty cool of them. So uh, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. I, I put a link in, I put a link to their video in my video uh, where I reviewed the little camera so uh, it's in there if I remember it I'll put it in down here if it's not down there remind me so I'm gonna go around the back and clean the uh, clean up back there too so I put the network cards in and I put in the two one meter cables in uh, two of the servers I forget which two though but I also put in a cable in the big NAS thing down here uh, which I'm right now installing Windows on because I said I was going to do that so I'm going to do that and I'm going to see if I can get all those 48 drives up and running in some good fashion to just to see that it's working and I might also want to see it transferring data forth and back to the servers up here with the 10 gigabit uh, so right now I have to do <laughs> So, uh, the servers up here, I want to be running VMware on those, so um, I'm going to be installing that as well. And for that, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be putting in some some hard drives for them to boot on. Actually, they can boot, of course, on uh, USB sticks, they, on USB keys inside the server. But well, I'm actually just going to be putting in some hard drives. These are Intel SSDs, and they are 120 gigabytes each. So we're gonna put one in each of those. There. This setup would probably also be really good to try some um, some hyperconverged storage, maybe. I have wanted to try that for a while, um, so I might go ahead and do that. Uh, I need some good SSDs for that. I don't know if those. I just put in there probably then I'm probably not gonna cut it but yeah that's uh, the idea right now I'm installing software here and there and it's kind of boring so I'll get back to you when there is something to show for all of this there is not many but there are a few advantages of being a single uh, junk food burger dinner at the data center while installing VMware life is good okay i have gotten so far as to i'm um, looking at the different uh, network possibilities inside of vmware 6.5 and at the top we have the two one gigabit ethernet card i have put something in one of them right now ethernet one is connected and that's the one that we are running on right now then we have vmware nic 2 and vmware nic 3 
they're in system slot one and system slot one must be the one that um, that I put that PCI card in sounds about right uh, but I can see that I have put it in VMware NIC 3 so that is connected down here that means that I put it in the wrong port because I actually wanted to put it in the first network port I'm pretty sure that it, um, it means absolutely nothing but I think I'll change it anyway I'm wondering if this will change if I do it while we record this No, so we'll just try and go in and go go out and go in again and now it's correct okay so uh, that's the 10 gigabit ethernet that would have been cool if it it were if it was saying that okay the windows server is up and running and we also have a 10 gigabit ethernet card here and if we press it uh, and it says 10 gigabit and it has ooh, it has been up for 54 for 54 minutes already I have been sitting on my <coughs> yeah whatever uh, so that's nice unfortunately I don't really have anything to test this with um, I really don't feel like setting up another window server just to test this and it will be a while before these VMware servers are ready to to do anything meaningful um, so yeah we have this working that's about it right now oh I see that in here is not going as well I was making a new bootable Lenovo Xclarity essential bootable media creator thinky to uh, firmware update servers and I thought that well I might as well just put the the Lenovo X3650 model 4 and the Lenovo 35 50 model 4 on there and I ran out of space on the USB stick <sighs> It was a 4 gigabit USB stick. That's that's a shame, but in here in the ubiquity uh, Manager I've accessed the switch and the switch is over here So it's clear to see that These are white and white means 10 gigabit there and these with the question marks that's the one where I put in the SFPs, but there is no cables in it, so it's complaining about that. Green ones, well, they are uh, one gigabit. And to my previous video where I was messing with this, with the help in the comments, I managed to move this USG to another IP number. So that was absolutely awesome. So right now it's not conflicting with my PFSends router so that's nice i got a lot of uh, response on that video thank you very much so one of my big questions right now is what should i use this network for the 10 gigabit ethernet in the server should i use it for the network connection or should i use it as a storage connections like for iSCSI or should i use it for both like would i be able to to, uh, to use VLANs to separate the traffic and uh, better utilize that connection that would I thought maybe that would be a good solution um, and have some kind of quality of service maybe so that one service would not be able to use all the bandwidth like if I'm using my servers through the internet and I have like a 30-30 megabyte connection over the internet well, there is no reason whatsoever to reserve 10 gigabit uh, connection uh, for the bottleneck just to be my internet connection. Um, so maybe have quality of service on the on the outgoing network connection f uh, so that it doesn't get smaller than one gigabit connection. Um, yeah. You're very welcome to comment on that. I would love to hear what would be the best solution. What's, I only have 16 ports in that switch and only 12 of them are uh, FSPs. And yes, I will also go here when I'm done recording this video and order some DAC connectors to, to try those out. 
that's uh, instead of having the fiber optic cables between the switch and the server you just plug in a cable it's more or less it's just like a RJ45 connection RJ45 connector not entirely but uh, it feels much more like it in that way so well I hope you got something out of this we didn't do a whole lot well I did a whole lot but we didn't do anything we didn't we didn't do a whole lot of new stuff but yeah we got further on this project of getting 10 gigabits working in my data center so thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye